party started. So I am live with you. It's it's so good to be live with you. My name is Ben Azadi. If we're just meeting, it's awesome to meet you. I'm the best-selling author of four books, and I'm the founder of Keto Camp. I'm here at Keto Camp HQ right now. Uh, we're located in Miami Beach, Florida. Our mission here at Keto Camp is to educate, to inspire you, to inspire 1 billion people, to reverse metabolic disease like type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, cancer, autoimmune disease. It's a big problem, but we got the solution, and it's a very powerful solution that we're going to talk about today. Gail, good to see you. And Alina is going to be helping us out in the chat box. She's a part of the Keto Camp team. So what I want you to do is to start sending your questions my way. And I'm going to do my best to answer as many possible in the next hour that we're live here. And if you didn't let me know where you're watching from, put your city, your state, your country, etc. So let me get to the question here from BFP1973 on Instagram. When will I stop being hungry in ketosis? I started six weeks ago, and it sounds like you're still, still struggling with cravings. And that could be beneficial to anybody who's struggling with cravings. I'm going to give you some coaching on that right now. So number one, I would examine sleep, quality sleep. Sleep is very important for many reasons. A lot of people don't understand this. They think I'm going to lose weight and burn fat at the gym. Well, 98% of your fat burning takes place during delta sleep, deep sleep. So many studies have come out over the years. This is going to blow your mind. So many studies show when you're not getting enough sleep, and that's unique to you, when you're not getting enough quality sleep, the next morning and the next day, you're going to have higher levels of cortisol, your stress hormone. What follows cortisol is glucose, so you'll have higher blood sugars, and what lowers when glucose goes up are ketones. Ketones are very beneficial for helping you feel full and satiated. So if you're not able to produce enough because your glucose is up, that's a problem. There's another issue here. The studies also show that the hormone ghrelin is higher the next day when you're not getting quality sleep. So if you haven't heard of that hormone before, ghrelin, I want you to think of ghrelin as a gremlin. This is your hunger hormone. This is the hormone that comes out and you get stomach, uh, hunger pangs. Go pick up the fork. Go eat that donut and consume food. Ghrelin is a gremlin because nobody likes a gremlin. It makes noise. We want it to get out of here, right? When you're not getting quali quality sleep, studies show you have higher levels of ghrelin. And then you have lower levels of leptin. Leptin is another hormone that tells your brain you're full. You're satiated. No need to eat the Cheetos. No need to eat that pizza. No need to eat that bad food. You're full. It's a fat-burning hormone because it prevents you from overeating. When you're not getting quality sleep, especially not enough deep sleep, you'll have this vicious, 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 <laughs> vicious excuse me, cycle occurring. Not good. So I would make sure you're getting about seven to nine hours of quality, quality sleep. Look at your sleep metrics. I use this ring on my finger. It's a sleep ring called Aura Ring. There's other sleep metrics out there like Whoop Band, Fitbit, Apple Watch. Aim to get about two hours of deep sleep and two hours of REM sleep each night. That will help tremendously with the cravings. Second thing you can do about having cravings is increase your protein intake especially animal-based protein, okay? The reason I love protein for many, many reasons, but especially for helping you feel full and satiated, is because protein is unique as opposed to the other macronutrients. So just to give you a review here, we have three macronutrients. We have protein, we have fat, and we have carbohydrates. Protein activates signals, hormones, and chemicals inside of your body that carbs and fat don't necessarily do. And these are, I'm going to give you the names, cholecystokinin, leptin, and peptide YY. Okay, cholecystokinin, leptin, and peptide YY. What are these three things and why are they important? They all signal to your stomach and to your brain, you're full. Put down the fork. No need to go into your pantry. No need to go into your refrigerator. You're satiated. So when you eat enough protein, you're getting these signals to your body and your brain, and it helps prevent you from overeating. It helps with cravings. It helps with feeling hungry. Aim to get at least 40 grams of animal-based protein at all of your keto meals, 
with quality sleep and you should see those cravings diminish. I hope that makes a big, big difference for you. I'm going to answer some more questions here. So I see Virginia in Rancho Cucamonga, Cucamonga, California. That's just fun to say. Rancho Cucamonga, California. I just like saying that city. You say, I'm currently breastfeeding and struggling with milk supply. Do you recommend intermittent fasting? I have stalled in my weight loss. I exercise daily. Virginia, first of all, congratulations on the, on the baby. That's amazing. Beautiful. What a blessing. Uh, this is a tough one. This is not medical advice, but I'm going to share with you what I've seen with the students inside of my Keto Camp Academy. If you're breastfeeding, it's not typically recommended to do keto or to do intermittent fasting because what could happen with what you just said, Virginia, you might lose your milk supply for the baby. Therefore, I would not suggest or recommend, again, this is not medical advice, doing intermittent fasting or doing keto if you're breastfeeding or even pregnant. It's probably not a good idea. doesn't mean you have to eat high carb and snack all day long, but maybe it's a paleo approach with 100 grams of carbs per day to 150 grams of carbs per day with three main meals. So you might want to give that a shot. And it's, it's unique, right? Because everybody has a different carbohydrate threshold, but we want to support the milk supply. We want to support the baby that you just brought into this, this world. So that would be my recommendation. Now for the weight loss stall, it's going back to the sleep thing. 98% of your fat burning hormones are activated during Delta sleep. How do you get more Delta sleep? I'm glad you asked that question. There's a few ways backed up by research. Number one, Number one, make sure your bedroom is very, very cold. If you want to get more fat-burning sleep, turn that thermostat inside of your house, inside of your apartment to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where studies show you get the most delta fat-burning restorative sleep, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Number two, make that bedroom as dark as possible. You could either put, out, put up blackout curtains or you could wear a sleep mask. Number three, you might want to consider something called a chili pad. I'm a big fan of chili pad technology. If you don't know what that is, I've interviewed Tara Youngblood on my Keto Camp podcast. Go listen to that. I have a chili pad right on my bed. So what a chili pad is, you put it on top of your mattress, on top of your bed sheet, and you lay down on it when you go to bed. And then the device sits right beside your bed. You put some water in it, and you set the, the temperature on that device you could set it as cold as 55 degrees and it runs cool water throughout your mattress, which, which reduces your core body temperature, which is what you want for deep fat burning sleep. If you want to learn more about that technology and how this all works and all about sleep, just go to your favorite podcast platform, type in Keto Camp Podcast, Tara Youngblood, and go listen to that. Dan, good to see you in Atlanta joining us again. How many energy bits and recovery bits do you take a day? Thank you, Ben. I take a packet a day of each. I think there's 30 in each, so I probably take 60 a day on average to answer your question. Energy bits are fantastic. They, it's high quality, cold processed, um, chlorella and spirulina. And I interviewed Catherine Arnston twice on my Keto Camp podcast if you want to learn more about that. Energybits.com, our coupon code with them is Keto Camp. Linda Gordon says, Keto, two years, mold illness and no weight loss, any hacks? Yeah, um, mold illness is, is, is nasty. I'm sorry that you were going through that. Now, let me ask you this, Linda. Is that mold environment taken care of? Have you remediated? Have you moved? Or is it still an ongoing environment of mold? I personally have been poisoned by mold myself. I had mold illness. That will prevent your body from healing. So uh, I would check. I would answer that question for me if it's a current mold illness or current mold environment. So puremaintenance.com is a great company to do a mold test in your home here in the United States. Now, there's a few things you can do. Um, you could take binders. You could support the liver. You could support your detoxification pathways like your liver, your colon, your kidney to help with the mold spores. But it's going to be a very comprehensive thing that you want to do. Um, so I, if you want to email me support at ketocamp.com, we could talk about options for a mold detoxification, um, support, and that's going to help with your weight loss. Cause mold is nasty. They're called mycotoxins. And in Florida where I live, it's everywhere because it's a lot of humidity here. And I was 
mold poison for several years at my old house. All right, I'm going to get to some more questions here. Ashley Duclair, good to see you. Keto Camp Academy in the house. Sally Harrison, good to see you. Keto Camp Academy in the house. I see Sandra, another keto camper too, uh, in Wisconsin. Debbie in New Jersey. Carol in Park City. I'm going to be in Park City next month. Utah. Carnivore and keto, Your kidneys are, are your kidneys at risk? No. Protein and eating animal-based protein will not impact kidney health unless you have a history of a kidney disorder. But if you don't, there's no research to show that eating more protein and meat will affect the kidneys. It's the combination of high protein, animal protein, and carbs that could impact the kidneys, but not just protein alone, unless you have that history of a kidney, kidney disease. All right, Felicity says, melatonin or magnesium, which helps those who have sleep issues? They're both great. Melatonin is much more than for sleep, by the way. It's, it's the most powerful antioxidants for your mitochondria. Magnesium is something that I would take every day. Melatonin, I would take cyclical. And um, they're both great. Uh, I would, if I was going to choose one, I would probably choose, uh, it's hard. I, the magnesium for sure. Every, most people are deficient in magnesium. So I would take that every day. I take about 400 to 600 milligrams of magnesium daily. The melatonin, I will uh, do it cyclical. So maybe two days in two nights in a row, three days off, two nights in a row, three days off. They're both going to be great though. Julie says, just bought Keto Mojo. Can I lens on top of my arm or just my finger? You'll get the most accurate results with your finger because of the capillaries there. Um, so I would recommend that as opposed to your arm. You can use your arm and you will get a reading, but it won't be as accurate as your fingers. How do you get fiber on keto? I'm glad you asked. A um, few ways to do so. You could get fiber on keto by eating green leafy vegetables. Some of my favorites are the bitters like arugula and dandelion greens and artichokes, coconut meat. Great way to get fiber on keto. Uh, but you don't have to stress the fiber thing. You know, fiber is very much overrated. And uh, a lot of people could thrive with little fiber. Some people might benefit from more fiber, but it's going to be very different for the, for the person. Uh, but my favorite sources are going to be coconuts, artichokes, green leafy vegetables on keto. And they're all keto friendly. Psyllium husk could be okay for some as well. That's a good suggestion. Okay. Keep your questions coming. Let me just check Instagram. I saw a question up ahead. Hey Maria, good to see you. I've been having nightmares on carnivore, normal recommendations. Um, usually nightmares are a result of the hours leading up to sleep. Somebody watched a scary movie or watched the news or watched something negative on social media that usually translates to nightmares. Now what you can do, maybe that's not you, I don't know, but what you can do is gratitude journaling and reading a book before bed that should mitigate that. So really be intentional with the 30 to 60 minutes before you go to sleep with filling your subconscious mind with positive, amazing information. And that should do the trick. I don't think it's the carnivore doing it. I think it's something else. Ali says, keto and high cholesterol. Thoughts. I got a lot of thoughts on that. You might have heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again. Total cholesterol, <clears throat> total cholesterol does not mean a damn thing. What's up, Darren? And as a matter of fact, more people die from heart disease with normal to low cholesterol than with high cholesterol. It's much, much more than just total cholesterol. Yeah, your total cholesterol might go up with keto. Your LDL might go up with keto, but you know what else will happen? Your HDL goes up too, which is very protective and your triglycerides drop because you're burning fat and your inflammatory markers improve because you're using ketones. So I would explore the full picture here. On my YouTube channel, Ali, if you go to youtube.com and type in keto camp cholesterol, I have a ton of videos on this. I even go over example lab reports to give you an idea of optimal ranges. Something that I also like to look at when it comes to your cholesterol panel, your lipid panel, getting your triglyceride to HDL ratio. And how this works is you get your total triglyceride from your doctor divided by your total HDL, and you want that 1.5 or less. That puts you at low risk for heart disease. Becky, you nailed it. Uh, and then like Alina just said, inflammatory markers are just, are more important than
just your cholesterol. So C-reactive protein, homocysteine, A1C, fasting insulin, fibrinogen. Make sure your doctor, you're doing this every year. You're looking at that because a lot of doctors will say, oh, you're doing keto. Your total cholesterol is up. Stop doing keto or here's a statin. But there's so many more moving parts. Cholesterol is great for the body. Your membrane is made up of uh, protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. The brain loves cholesterol. The body and your hormones love cholesterol. So it's not cholesterol that's bad. It's inflammation. Inappropriate, chronic, low-grade inflammation is the problem. TikTok, keep your questions coming. I see them. Turning, tuning in from San Diego this morning. Hey, Chris. Ocean View. Glad to jump on. Got my vitamin G going on, Chris. I love it. Sounds beautiful. I got vitamin G for you as well. I see Denise watching from Jamaica. I see uh, Brian and Jill Roach. Good to see you again. Is there a liposomal melatonin brand that you recommend? I think MitoZen has one. So if you go to mitozen.com slash ketocamp, I think they have one on there. Actually, I know they do. It's called Sandman Liposomo. So they do have one. And we have a 15% off coupon code with them. So it's mitozen.com slash keto camp. Is coffee bad? I notice after I drink coffee, I get stomach pain. I'm having coffee right now. Depends on the type of coffee. Most coffee beans are loaded with pesticides and herbicides and can be inflammatory and create inflammation in your gut. But uh, if you're getting organic, shade-grown, fair trade coffee, like the coffee I drink, I drink purity coffee, it could be actually really beneficial to your body, to your liver, et cetera. You, um, are you adding anything to your coffee um, that might potentially be creating stomach upset? That could be like MCT oil is a common cause for stomach upset. So are you adding anything to your coffee is what I would ask. Now, somebody else asked, how do I fix high cortisol? Sleep, number one, quality sleep. Like we spoke about at the beginning of this live stream, number one. Number two, gratitude, vitamin G, practice vitamin G on a daily basis. Number three, find ways to activate oxytocin. Oxytocin is what counteracts cortisol. Cortisol is your fight or flight stress hormone. Not bad unless it's in excess. Oxytocin tapers down cortisol. Oxytocin is that feel good hormone. You get it from laughing, gratitude journaling, playing with your pets, hugging, funny movies. So that's how you could do it. Um, you could also do a Dutch test, which is a great urine test to see at what point during the day is your cortisol high, at what day is it low, at what point during the day is it low, and you could do unique things throughout the day to customize it so you get a nice circadian rhythm with your cortisol. Is it realistic to lose 100 pounds in four months if you weigh over 300 pounds doing keto, OMAD, etc.? I wouldn't focus on the weight loss, my friend, and you could definitely... The body is going to lose the weight the way that it's supposed to when you do things the right way. I would take your attention off. I know this is going to be hard and I'm, I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you up. And this is for anybody who's focusing on weight loss. Look, I get it. I was obese. I weighed 250 pounds. I understand having a weight loss goal is important. I get that. But the body does not lose weight to get healthy. The body gets healthy to get rid of that weight. You reduce cellular inflammation, a side effect, the weight comes off. Because my friend, you weigh over 300 pounds, you don't have a weight problem. I weighed 250 pounds 10, 12 years ago. I didn't have a weight problem. And as a matter of fact, here's the secret. There's not one person in the history of this world who has ever had a weight problem. It is a weight symptom. The real problem or hormones, and inflammation. So I would focus on ways to reduce cellular membrane inflammation. Keto, fasting, sleep, gratitude, grounding, right? Darren said grounding. Grounding is another vitamin G. If you don't know what grounding is, very simple to do and simple not to do. That's why a lot of people don't do it. You walk barefoot on planet Earth like our ancestors did for so long either on grass or sand or dirt. When you walk barefoot, you get this electrical discharge where your body, it's like taking a handful of antioxidants. I'm standing on a mat right now called a PEMF mat, which is giving me grounding as I stand in my apartment here because it's hard to ground in an apartment or a house. So by 
I bypass that by standing on a PEMF mat. But you can just go outside. You don't have to buy a mat. Go outside and just walk barefoot. Becky does it all the time. 30 to 60 minutes a day, lower inflammation. There's so many things, and it's free. 100% free. So many things we can do that are free. I'm going to share something with you that's going to blow your mind. If you're ready for me to share some research with you right now that's going to blow your mind, let me know in the chat box by saying, I'm ready, Ben. You ready for this? Now, I'm going to share some slides on YouTube and Facebook. If you're watching on Instagram and TikTok, you won't be able to see the slides, but I'll explain it in a way that you could understand what I'm about to share. It's going to blow your mind right now. So if you're ready for me to share this, say, I'm ready, Ben. Share it with me. There is a book. I actually have it here, but I'm going to have to have it on my stand. So one second. This book right here. Bear with me. This book right here, everybody needs to go read. I see. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's called Messages, The Hidden Messages in Water. Okay, so I'm speaking at Austin, Texas next month at KetoCon, KetoCon.org. I want to see you there. It's going to be amazing. And I've been researching, putting together my presentation slides, and I came across research that gave me goosebumps. I'm going to share it with you right now. It's from this book. Okay, so let me share this on here. Let me get, get my slides, share screen, window. Okay, so you should be able to see this now if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook. But if you're not, I'm going to explain what I'm showing here. Okay, so when we think about this book, there's the, the researcher, his name is Dr. Masuro Emoto. I know it's backwards on TikTok, but Dr. Isuro, uh, Masuro Emoto. In his book, Dr. Emoto demonstrates how water exposed to loving, benevolent, and compassionate human intention results in aesthetically pleasing physical molecular formations in the water, while water exposed to fearful, discordant human intentions resulted in different formation of water, disfigured, unpleasant physical molecular formations. And how he did this was very accurate. He used a device called magnetic, magnetic resonance analysis technology and high-speed photography. And here's what he found. Each water crystal I'm about to show you, and I'll explain it to you on TikTok and Instagram, was exposed to a word written next to it prior to being photographed. And here's what he found. The, the image on the left shows what the water turned into after love and gratitude. It's a beautiful crystal that I'm showing here. Expressing love and gratitude to water changed the molecular structure to show it into this beautiful, aesthetically pleasing crystal. And then he would write and say the words, you disgust me to the water. You disgust me. And it turned into this nasty, sludgy water when he did his scans. Look at what I'm showing you on the screen for those on YouTube and Facebook. That is incredible. Let's see if I could find in the book real quick to show you on. Yeah, here we go. Love and gratitude. Turn into that. For those watching on Instagram and TikTok, love and gratitude. And then you disgust me turned into, you make me sick, you disgust me, turned into this right here, this nasty sludge. And then eternal love turned into this beautiful crystal. Peace turned into this beautiful crystal. Evil thoughts and evil messages turned the water into this nasty structure that you see right there. This right here. This right there. Thank you. Expressing gratitude, it changed that chemical structure to that beautiful crystal you see there, which is, um, there's your cute. There's a whole bunch here. I can't find the one that I'm showing here on my slides. But here's the most important thing to understand. You're like, okay, Ben, how the hell, why are you bringing this up? Why, how does this even relate to me? I'm a human being. I'm not water. Um, at least 70% of the human body is water. Okay? At least 70% of the human body is water. That's why I always say you are the most influential person you will ever speak to. Today, tomorrow, every single day. And if you have 60,000 thoughts per day and your thoughts are changing the chemical structure of your body at the cellular level, what are those thoughts? Are they serving you or are they doing the opposite? 
It's powerful. I hope that's a wake-up call for you. The better you can get at observing those thoughts and choosing loving, abundant, grateful thoughts, you change the chemical structure of your body. Not only that, Dr. Bruce Lipton has proven your thoughts are a frequency that have the ability to penetrate your cell membranes and communicate with your DNA to produce proteins and stem cells. What? Your thoughts create proteins and stem cells in your body. That's not woo-woo. Dr. Bruce Lipton has research to back that up. And he has shown if it's a negative thought, what I call a stinking thinking thought, that creates um, inflammatory proteins and inflammatory response by the body. But if it's a loving, grateful, abundant thought, vitamin G, that creates anti-inflammatory proteins and stem cells from your body. 60,000 thoughts per day means you have 60,000 opportunities every single day to put your body in an anti-inflammatory healing state. You have the power. The greatest power you have as a human being is your ability to think and originate thoughts. But if your thinking is stinking, your dreams are shrinking. So I could tell you how to do keto perfectly, how to keto flex, the best intermittent fasting schedule, the best workouts, how to enhance your sleep. But if you're not working on that mental six pack, you're not going to get the results you want. This is something we dive deep into every day inside of the Keto Camp Academy, which is my online membership. I'm going to go deep into it when I speak at KetoCon next month in Austin, Texas. So I would love to see you there and give you a hug and have you watch my keynote lecture at KetoCon. You can learn more about that conference over at KetoCon.org. We have a coupon code KetoCamp for you to get 20% off your tickets. And I see all of your comments saying, wow, that's amazing. It works. Thank you. I firmly believe this. I'm telling you, it's insane. I'll answer some more questions here for you. Summer, I know you know all about that. Zulus, Zulu, excuse me, says, hello, Ben, do you have any suggestions for multiple chemical sensitivities? I eat and live clean. I was an industrial worker prior to my symptoms. I'm taking 12 milligrams of Lugos daily and take a binder. Yeah, you're going to need real detox. Uh, I was also very chemically sensitive to the point where if I got into an Uber car and that Uber driver had those nasty, toxic air fresheners, my heart rate increased and I started to sweat. Uh, if I got into an elevator with a woman or a guy who had a whole bunch of perf perfume or cologne, my heart started to race. My limbic system started to freak out and, and it put me in a stressful environment. I was so chemically sensitive. It wasn't until I did real detox that I was able to get rid of these sensitivities and retrain my brain. So it's great that you're doing a few things, but real detox is much more than that. If you want to learn more about how I do detox and how I teach detox, I take a small group a couple times per year through detox, email me, support at ketocamp.com. We're about to take a group of 20 people very, very soon. And um, we haven't announced it yet, but if we'll give you first access to that. If you just email me, support at ketocamp.com, I'll share a little bit more about you uh, in regards to that. Ben, we believe it. We put our mineral water in the sun first thing in the morning and speak affirmations and gratitude for it for 20 minutes every morning. Physically, we have changed in a dramatic way. That's so beautiful, Brian and Jill. Amazing. Which book should I start with if I'm done keep fasting and keto without success on my own? Uh, I'm going to be biased here and, and tell you keto flexing is going to work well for you. So I would recommend my book um, where I outline my four pillars for how to do keto and fasting the right way. So it's ketoflexbook.com. It's available on Kindle, paperback, and Audible. I'm the one who read the narrated the Audible. How many days of fasting is ideal? Well, if, if you're doing intermittent fasting every day, and 18.6 is a pretty good schedule, 18 hours fasted, six hours eating window, if you're thinking about like a block fast, which is three or more days, uh, once a quarter for most people could get away with that with great benefits. I gave you a, gr a long, great answer uh, about hunger and keto. Um, so you missed it, unfortunately. So you can watch the replay on my YouTube channel because I gave you like a five minute answer on that. It was a great answer, I believe. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Very interested. I'll be in contact. Awesome. Yeah. Summer just did my detox program. She made tremendous, 
tremendous results with it. I'm just looking at some questions here. What's your opinion on DIM supplementation? There's a time and place for it, but if somebody has estrogen dominance, DIM supplementation could help. But if somebody has low estrogen, DIM can make them feel worse. So what do you do? You got to do a Dutch test to see where your estrogen is at. Dutch test is a urine test. It's fantastic. Brian and Joe Roach says, we have read dozens of keto books and by far... Ben's book is the best. It is our Bible for keto. Flexing was the part that is missed by most. So appreciate you. Thank you so much. I saw a video of people talking crap to a plant and it got weak. That is true. That happens too. Hypothyroidism and weight gain. That is very, very common. And the number one thing that creates hypothyroidism, which is an underactive thyroid, is heavy metal uh, poisoning. So mercury, lead, but especially mercury, the heavy metal mercury, which has an affinity for the thyroid gland, it attacks it. So detox is going to be important. If you have silver fillings in your mouth, go find a biological dentist and get that removed safely and then do some real detox. And then the weight will come off as you support the thyroid by removing the interference. I also have a lot of interviews with Dr. Rebecca Warren. She's a thyroid expert on my YouTube channel and Keto Camp Podcast. I would recommend checking that out. Soaking your beans and pressure cooking your beans are much better, Soji. They remove a lot of the anti-nutrients. So if you're going to have beans, soaking and pressure cooking would be a much better option. I typically don't have beans. I just don't feel great with them. Where do we get mercury? The number one source of mercury is mom. The second source is silver amalgam fillings. Uh, another source of mercury would be flu shots. And if you wore contact lenses in the 80s and 90s, it had methyl mercury in it as well. Does detox help the gallbladder? Doctor wants to remove mine. The gallbladder is a very important organ. And it, doctors are so, they want to remove it so easily. They're like quick to pull the trigger. Detox, absolutely done the right way, can help the gallbladder. But also you want to support the liver. The liver works with the gallbladder. And if you support the liver, it will help take the load off the gallbladder. So eat more bitters, coffee enemas, castor oil packs, a lot of ways to support that beautiful soccer mom liver. Felicity, email me. I'd love to give you more details on the detox plan. Uh, support at ketocamp.com. Camp is spelled with K. Can I do keto intermittent fasting while maintaining and building muscle? Tome. Yes, you want to have, you want to prioritize protein, lift weights, work on your gut and get quality sleep. And you can do that all while doing keto. I've interviewed doctor, not doctor, uh, Robert Sykes. He's a natural keto bodybuilder and he's living proof it can be done. The guy's absolutely ripped. If you want inspiration, go listen to my Keto Camp podcast with Robert Sykes and you'll hear more about that. I'll answer a few more questions, so keep them coming. Uh, where was it? YouTube. I am who I am, says, craving, serious sugar addict. What can I do? I never get past withdrawal, sleeping only two to three nights, two to three hours a night. I would work with somebody. If you have a real sugar addiction, it, I would find some people to work with. So here's what I would recommend. I'm not a sugar addiction specialist, and I don't claim to be one. And some people need to work with a specialist. So I will point you in the direction of the individuals I've interviewed that are experts. So if you go to youtube.com, which you're on right now, I see you on the live stream, and then type in the search bar, Keto Camp Sugar Addiction, watch my interviews with Dr. Joan Eflin, Bitten Johnson, Richard Johnson, David Wolf, and a few other experts. And then whoever resonates with you out of the people I've interviewed, reach out to them and work with them, and they will get you on the right track. Is breaking a fast, am I breaking a fast with supplements? Not, you're not, but I always say it's better to have your supplements during your eating window, especially those that contain herbs and fat soluble vitamins. Uh, you might lose some digestive benefits by taking the supplements during a fast, but I wouldn't say you're breaking a fast. Thank you, Alina. She's putting the links for you to watch on sugar addiction. She's on top of it. If you're barefoot in the sand on the beach, is that considered a form of grounding? Absolutely, yes. It could be grass, dirt, sand, 
all of the above. Yep, that is grounding. Sand is probably the best way to ground, by the way. I will answer a few questions here. Are silver caps the same thing as silver fillings? No, but I wouldn't want any silver in my mouth. So I would explore and look for a biological dentist and find ways to remove it. And sometimes silver caps actually have silver amalgam fillings inside of it. So I would remove it and replace it. Biological dentists will tell you exactly what to do. James, good to see you on here. My friend, super camper here on YouTube. 36 hour fast weekly or a longer fast monthly, which is better. Um, a longer fast monthly might be too much. So a 36 hour fast weekly, I think for most people would be a better option and good job. I love your commitment. I see Carrizo Springs, Texas in the house. Hey Maria, are you going to KetoCon? I'd love to see you there. It's also in Texas, Austin, Texas, July 8th through July 10th. I'm going to answer one more question and then I got to run to get in a workout and then record a podcast later on today. So the question I'm going to answer is from Rhonda Clark. Will unsweetened cold brew coffee break a fast? The answer is probably not. But if you really want to get clear on what it's doing, test your blood glucose before the coffee and then about 30 to 45 minutes after. And if you see your blood glucose go up by more than five points, three days in a row on average, you might be losing some of the autophagy benefits. If you see your glucose stay the same, you're good to go. So the best way to know is to test, but in general, most coffee, especially organic, unsweetened cold brew should be fine, but you could always test to learn more. I hope this was helpful. You know, I'm live with you every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time. So put a reminder in your calendar to join me next week. If you want to watch the replay on this because you missed some of it, that could be found on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash keto camp. Go subscribe to the keto camp podcast. We release brand new episodes every Monday, every Friday, and sometimes on Wednesdays. We just released one today as well, and we have a great one coming up Friday. So I want to say thank you. I got a lot of vitamin G for you. I hope to see you at KetoCon in Austin, Texas next month. Have a great blessed day.